71 degrees at 8.30. Boy, we slept in today, didn't we, T-Rex? <laughs> it's Tuesday. If it's gonna rain, let it rain on a Tuesday. Not like last Tuesday, when we got four to six inches. So far, today has been an underachiever with just a few inches, just <laughs> the only place with a few inches was the south side of Long Island and the Pioneer Valley along the Connecticut River in Massachusetts came in with one to one and a half, but we're only about a quarter of the way through this event. It's a great what is wind kind of morning. Wind is air moving from high to low pressure. And those flags on the mast of Leif's sailboat clearly indicate air coming from the east and the northeast. Here around the Four River and Boston Harbor, it's about 10 to 15 miles an hour. How about the summit of Mount Washington? Three miles an hour. Hey, there's a cardinal bending the weather stick. That doesn't count. <laughs> so how can it be three miles an hour from the southwest on Mount Washington and 15 miles an hour from the opposite direction, northeast, here in Boston. <laughs> well, it has to do with the vertical profile of the atmosphere, Tim. Let's check out the velocity azimuth display. And this shows through radar detection, wind, speed, and direction through a cross section of the atmosphere over the radar in Norton, Massachusetts. Or is the radar in Taunton? I know I say that all the time. So the bottom 8,000 feet here over Boston the air is coming from the east and southeast. And then you get up above 10,000 feet, and now your air is coming in from the west and southwest. And you get up to 25,000 feet, and it's coming from the southwest at about 50 knots. So up in the sky, air is coming from the southwest. Down on the ground, air is coming from the northeast. How does that happen? Here is the surface analysis. There is a 1014 millibar, fairly weak, high pressure system over Maine. And then there's a 1,004 millibar, fairly strong for summertime, low over New Jersey. Again, at least it's not sub 1,000 like last week. And so the little high in Maine has got some cool air near the ground. And that cool air is more dense than the warm air that's coming up from the Southwest high in the sky. It's called an overrunning event. Less dense warm air goes over the top of the cool air, and as it rises, it condenses and forms rain. And that's why it's raining. I'm getting pretty wet right now, to tell you the truth. Shall we check the rain gauge here in Weymouth? 0.37, and like I said, this event has a long way to go. Let's look at the radar. The rain stretches now from Nova Scotia all the way back to Chicago. And it's a wavy front. There's another low out there near Chicago, about 1,006 occluded low. And that's not gonna go by until tomorrow night. All right, nature break. Size of those pumpkins. Coming in, good. And also, birds are working. Andrew, are you fishing this morning? There are no fishermen on those birds, but those birds are on fish right there off. How's neck with an incoming tide. All right, where were we? I put some of that on my pumpkins to try and prevent them from eating the pumpkins. Something took a couple nibbles out of this one. <laughs> so plenty of rain for the garden. And when it rains on a Tuesday and lingers into Wednesday with an additional half inch to an inch or more as possible, it's hard to time. If we can get into some sunshine, there's a possibility of some severe weather, any place that can get sunny on the warm side of this front, which is Southern New England. So I think it's limited to really the South Coast and back to New Jersey. <laughs> okay, so a gull catches some seafood and then another bird comes and steals it. What is that, an osprey stealing it? Can't tell. No. What is it? Come on, fly over my head. Drop a fish in my yard. Do it. Do it. It's not an eagle, is it? It's no way. But eagles are very predatory. 
they'll steal anything. Oh, it's gone. Sorry. What a tease. I have seen an eagle once or twice. <laughs> We're at five minutes and I haven't even gotten past Wednesday. All right, the occluded low is going to go by tonight and tomorrow. This low level moisture is going to linger. The air from the northeast may actually increase to 20 to 25 knots. Maybe some surf building here tonight and tomorrow before the air tries to come in from the southwest on Thursday, but it's a lazy front to our south that's gonna hinder the warm up and drying on Thursday. So there's a lot of low level moisture. Check, track the red line and the blue line. Red line temperature, blue line dew point. When the temperature and dew point get stuck together, you get stuck in these low clouds, fog and drizzle with only some sunny breaks. That is the forecast through Thursday. And then Friday, there's an impressive front coming at us. You know, you think with the wind from the northeast, maybe even in winter, this would be snow. Maybe in winter, this would be snow, but it wouldn't because there's a 981 low on the north side of Hudson Bay, and that's really pushing a lot of warmth into eastern Canada, relatively speaking. So even if this was winter, this would still be rain. It would be a cold rain. and would all be upset with ourselves. <laughs> that air from the southwest of Mount Washington. Anyhow, this next front on Friday from the south side of that low is going to bring in another round of showers and thunderstorms, and that's going to push through. So if you get rain on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and drizzle on a Thursday and thunderstorm on a Friday, guess what the weekend does? It turns nice. <laughs> and the Euro has kind of backed off that lingering low in northern Maine, but it's still a strong low north of Maine, but it's more progressive lifting out. So even northern New England now looks better for the weekend than it did yesterday. So temperatures should recover. And then next week is another real wild card. You remember about eight or nine days ago, I said, oh, around August 15th, there's going to be a strong storm in central Canada, and that should push warmth into New England. Well, that strong storm is in central Canada, but there's a front stuck here on the south coast, so it's not happening. Well, anyhow, it tries the same thing for next Wednesday with a strong storm in central Canada and warm to hot air trying to come to New England. But somehow, you see those little thunderstorms there in New York. Somehow, we'll probably end up with a boundary here and keep us on the cooler side. If you look at the weather.us 14 day forecast for Boston, I show this every time, and the shading uh, tells a big story. So the, the operational numbers are the red line and the blue line, high and low temperature. And you can see that the uh, red line is near the bottom of the shading area. Those shaded areas are the, uh, the possibilities of temperatures. So uh, the euro says we're going to stick to the low side of the shading area and then you see that shading area peaks next wednesday with the variety of temperature forecasts from 68 to 96 for a high temperature next wednesday that's the 23rd just amazing we haven't hit 90 this month i don't think my house and also amazing how quiet the tropics are the national hurricane center says uh, those two yellow hashed areas look at that impressive wave coming off africa Zero probability of development in 48 hours and only a 10% in seven days. And I looked at some of the guidance. Uh, it doesn't show anything organized coming into the Caribbean. So for now, tropics are shut down, especially when we get these air masses coming out of southeastern Canada. Uh, hurricane repellent, I call it. And what is wind? Air moving from high to low pressure. Look at those clouds right there going in that direction. <laughs> and those clouds up there are going in that direction. We have shear. And the Severe Storm Prediction Center does hash us a little bit for a chance of a tornado today. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe near the south coast. Fun with weather and weather is hard. Out the door. What's more, the sky yesterday was tremendous. We started on Bass River. The sky was nowhere near as bright as I thought, but it put on a great show yesterday. T-Rex and I did a lot of hiking, and we just hung out in the yard last evening admiring the difference between ice crystals and water vapor high up, way up there, around 30,000 feet. Just a fascinating sky. I'm going to leave you with some gnat sound and a lot of just really spectacular, Chuck, spectacular clouds yesterday evening. We're testing the water on Fallen's Pond, Bass River, Site 2, August 14th. And some serious rain last week, but we're not testing for E. coli. We're testing for nutrients, uh, nutrients, nitrogen, oxygen, and water temperature. Water temperature is probably... So the question was, does the rain make the uh, water better or worse? Well, we don't test for E. coli, but the, most of the numbers here, since the last time we tested on the second, the uh, dissolved oxygen is up a little bit, which is great, and the 
salinity is down a little bit, which makes sense with the, the rainfall. And the water temperature is still about the same, about 25 Celsius, which I don't know in Fahrenheit off the top of my head. And we've also got some Virga coming out of the sky here on uh, Monday morning. <laughs> Charlie's walking by. He goes, oh, Coyote was here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, Coyote was here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seeds and feathers. Mm. Food chain can be cruel, can it? There comes the sun from the north, just like yesterday, kind of, but without the thunderstorms. One day in a row without a thunderstorm. Hey, T-Rex. We haven't visited a horse in a while, especially Peaches. Let's go say hello to Peaches. She's the same color as you. Oh, she seems to be having lunch. We brought some dessert, though. What are you going to have for dessert, Peaches? How about, what's this called, a Granny Smith apple? How do you feel about that? Nah. Hey, is fine with me. Hey, just leave it there. You can get it when you want to. <laughs> Meanwhile, up in the sky, we've had some cirrocumulus clouds that indicates instability way up there. They've filled in now a lower alto stratus. So there's another weather system coming in on our doorstep. How do you like them apples? Eh. Apples have had too much water this summer. I think that the land trust goes all the way to the town landing. We can take a right into the Davenport's house, or we can keep going straight. I haven't walked this path maybe in 50 years. I'll give you a hint, I was 10. Let's do it, Rex. Let's do it. We're all friends here, right? Some steep stairs there. You think you can do it, Rex? Wow. Look at him go. These are not code. <laughs> like 12 inch drop. I think this might be the end of 87 Alfred Metcalf Recreation Area right here. Sure, why not? Looks unoccupied. Connell family of Weymouth <laughs> used to own this compound right down here, and every Sunday was a blast. I think the Paynes own this now. And there's Fallen's Pond and Bass River on what's become a steamy, nice Monday afternoon. We call that Fallen's Pond too right there. But some astounding breaking news that I just discovered a butterfly bush on Cape Cod that lived through the winter. Everyone said all their butterfly bushes died on February 3rd when it was five below zero, but not this one. Kathy malcasian has got an alive butterfly bush. It's gonna get rained on again tonight. Wow, look at that. Almost some cumulonimbus and above that many fun layers. Autostratus, autocumulus, cirrostratus, cirrocumulus, and plain old cirrus, every layer. It's brewing again, another Tuesday of heavy rain. Marshfield Fair this week. I think we'll get some livestock going to the fair. So a rabbit just ran down the steps and both Steve and Rex took off after it. It made it, the rabbit's fine. Just an incredible sky again tonight. Nice blue sky in the background. And we've got the all variety of high altitude clouds, cirrus, cirrocumulus, cirrocumulus waves. Just indicates it's a really energized atmosphere. Look at that one over there. That's just amazing beauty. So beauty and the beast. How's the weather treating us this morning? Only time will tell. Can't even trust the three hour forecasts right now.
beyond me how all this beauty can happen at the exact same time. Is there a cloud biologist in the house? Two completely different dynamics, ice crystal formation and water vapor formation. And I'm sure there's some electricity involved in these two completely different dynamic clouds adjacent to one another. Cirrus ice crystals and altocumulus, or even cirrocumulus water vapor. I have no idea what the creature making this noise looks like, but he's somewhere between my pumpkin and my tomato in a way too dark for 8.30, August 14th.